welcome back to The Daily Poem. I'm David Curran. Today's poem is by Samuel Taylor Coleridge called Kublai Khan. This is a poem that has a fascinating story behind it. Um, well, I think it's fascinating. And I'm going to tell a little bit about that. Uh, but first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it. This is a poem that was originally written in about 1798 and then eventually published in 1816. It's an irregular form. Coleridge is famous for his relationship with William Wordsworth, with, with whom he was uh, great friends. And he also wrote a prose work called Biographia Literaria, which, um, as William Harmon writes, combines autobiography with criticism and remains a masterpiece of wisdom and insight into the subtlest of human arts. Kublai Khan has a poem you might recognize from the movie Citizen Kane, where it is recited at the beginning. I'm going to read it once, and then I'll tell you the story behind it, or let William Harmon help me with that, and then I'll read it one more time. This is Kublai Khan, or A Vision in a Dream, a Fragment. In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf, the sacred river, ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree. And here were forests ancient as the hills, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. But oh, that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedarn cover, a savage place, as holy and enchanted as air beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm, with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing, a mighty fountain momently was forced, amid whose swift half-intermitted burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail, or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail. And mid these dancing rocks, at once and ever, it flung up momently the sacred river. Five miles, meandering with a mazy motion, through wood and dale the sacred river ran, then reached the caverns measureless to man, and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean. And mid this tumult Kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves. Where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. A damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maid, and on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song? To such a deep delight would win me, that with music loud and long, I would build that dome in air that sunny dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, Beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his floating hair, weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honey doeth fed, and drunk the milk of paradise. William Harmon, in his The Classic Hundred Poems anthology, notes that this poem resembles a dream or even a dream within a dream. And he mentions that in the summer of 1797, Coleridge suffered a slight indisposition, his, those were Coleridge's words, for which opium was prescribed, as was commonly done then. And this opium made him fall into a sleep or a reverie just as he was reading a sentence about Kublai Khan in Samuel Purchas' book called Purchas's Pilgrimage, which was written in 1613. Coleridge reported that for about three hours he was in a strange condition during which he effortlessly composed hundreds of lines of poetry. And when he woke, he began to write down the poetry of which he had a distinct recollection. He managed to write down the 50-odd lines that we now have, but with much remaining to be written, he was interrupted by a person on business who detained him for more than an hour. When Coleridge was able to resume his work, he found that most of what he had distinctly recollected earlier had passed away like the images on the surface of a stream into which a stone has been cast. Let's read it one more time with all that in mind and uh, see, how it, see how it affects us. In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. 
So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills, where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree. And here were forests, ancient as the hills, enfolding sunny spots of greenery. But oh, that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedarn cover. A savage place, as holy and enchanted as air beneath a waning moon, was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm, with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing, a mighty fountain momently was forced amid whose swift haft intermitted burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail and mid these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river five miles meandering with a mazy motion through wood and dale the sacred river ran then reached the caverns measureless to man and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean and mid this tumult Kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves, where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain in the caves. It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. A damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maid, and on her dulcimer she played singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song, to such a deep delight twould win me, that with music loud and long I would build that dome in air, that sunny dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, Beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his floating hair. Weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honey dew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise. This has been another episode of The Daily Poem. Thank you for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem.